and uh, I think unless Joe Beavers gets lucky and hits a seven, he's going to rue not pushing pre-flop, don't you think so, Mark? He would have won it there and then. Probably ended up against Devilfish, maybe. Just imagine what Joe's going to say in the post-match interview, but let's see, can he hit a seven? Ace. No help. Just and two sevens, five. or we're going to lose Joe Beavers. He's a five. And he's gone. Joe okay. Beavers exits in sixth place. There was the raise by Devilfish, yeah. the aggressive player on the table. Joe Beavers had 1,800 left. I think he had enough to push all in with those pair of sevens. Having just got those chips, he decided to flat call. And Rillick made a squeeze play with a king 10. She flopped the 10, and she's knocked out Joe Beavers. I've got back into the game a little bit and uh, I picked up a pair of sevens. I'm actually calling to trap David with the sevens. You know, I'm not, um, I'm not looking to do anything else apart from get more chips from him. And it kind of, uh, it kind of went a little bit wrong when Inesca decides to raise behind um, with, uh, with, with the King-10. Obviously, once David calls, there's just so many chips in this pot, it puts me right back in the game, I'm gonna take the gamble. But the plan was to get David to double me through. There's five players left. The winner will go through to the final of late night poker. Runner up will go through to the semi final with a shot at the eighth seat. And Elliot not taking his foot off the gas. He's got what we call a rag ace, ace five off suit, raising it up. Your back behind him, those found a pair of eights. How'd you play a medium pair like this then, Mark? Got to find out where you are and make a raise. Need as much information as possible. You get none by calling. Sorry. Okay. Mike changes up moves. <laughs> Andreas, it's your turn. That's going to get fold. Sorry. Andreas, you're back. Considering his options. <laughs> a bit too eager to get some <laughs> chips in. It's from Stockholm in Sweden. He's folded. The reason he actually folded there was I don't know if you noticed, but really actually bet out of turn. Oh wow! Really? <laughs> yeah. And as in the rules of poker, you know that that bet stands. And was it a raise or was it? It a... was a raise. So Rillick re-raised Devilfish's bet out of turn, which folded. Oh, sorry. And Dreyas Jorbeck's pair of eights. <laughs> so no we're back round to that. Devilfish. Thought about it. <laughs> he goes king ten again. It's only another seven hundred to call. You know you're going to get a lot of action off everybody now. You did that with that king ten, so you got to be careful. You know that. Right? I don't know. I got an ace, but I don't know if I like it. I might catch an ace and go broke with Marina dealing. You can show me if you want, because we're friends, right? Well, I showed the ace there, and Rillick's going to know that she's managed to make a play on Devilfish. Devilfish beaten by a girl. Get in there. In boxing, I usually won by KO. <laughs> uh, in poker, it's a problem, but I am in a ring very aggressive. Uh, fighter, and I uh, try to do on the um, poker table. Still five players remaining in this fifth heat of party poker, late night poker, and the first ever champion, Dave Elliott, currently lying in fourth place in between the two online qualifiers, John Parsons and Andreas Jorbeck. Pass. John Parsons. Raise Says 550 50 again, so obviously this is a size of raise he likes to make. This time Devilfish folds. Pass. Round to Rillick in the big blind. She's got ace eight suited and makes she's re-raised. Well, pot's 2,350. He's got just over 3,000 left. I don't think calling is an option here, do you, Mark? I mean, it's, it's fold or all in. I'm all in. He's all in. Yep, John Parsons, he's made the decision. He's all in now. What did Mike Sexton tell... Agnieszka Rillick to do when she's re-raised and then being re-raised back when you've got ace eight suited. We're about to find out. Pot's five and a half thousand. It's an insta call. Yep. She has to call. She's got the odds to call, but she's not going to like it. When John Parsons turns over ace queen, she's dominated. Going to need a little bit of luck here. John shows ace queen. And shows ace, eight. So, internet qualifier, John Parsons, he's all in, he's got the best hand, he's got ace-queen, two-to-one favourite against Agnieszka Rillick with ace-eight suited. Up comes nine. 
Queen. Wow, well, she's drawing pretty thin now, isn't she, Mark? Passes his flop top pair. That's good night, Vienna. Seven or six at the lab. Oops. Well, <laughs> she's picked up a straight draw here. She can now six win with a six on the river. Let's see the river cut. Will Parsons survive? Six. No! Oh, Rillix hit the six! Word. And look at the John face John on John Parsons. Parsons. He can't, can't believe it. I've seen that many of this stuff on TV. That it, I just know what wow. What a great hand for late night poker. What a terrible hand for John Parsons. Amen. Aggressive play there from Anishka Rillick. Had to make the call. And she hit the river card. That six was perfect. Yeah, it was a difficult table. I had Devilfish directly to my left, so I knew he'd be trying to re-raising me and playing a lot of pots with me. I'm in position, so I couldn't do too much at the start. And then I picked up Ace Queen, and uh, the po the Polish girl. She uh, she re-raised me. She'd been re-raising every single time she had played a pot. She'd re-raised, and she had shown down King Ten in the hand before. So I thought she might be re-raising light. So I picked up Ace Queen, put it all in, got the money in the head, but. As the devil fish said, the seven or six alive and up, and then the seven came, and then the six came, of course, so that's me out. So Relic, our chip leader, 13,475. Well, at 4,800. The blinds, 100, 200. So still plenty of play. Yeah, Dave finds himself in a bit of a position there as the lowest chips. He's def definitely got to start making some moves. Pass. Relic folds, Moritzen, small blind. He's going to bump it up here. Yeah, A7. Well, he chooses just to flat call. He's trying to trap Devilfish here. Devilfish has got 10 8 suited. Two players. 400 in the pot. Check. And a quick check from Moritzen. He didn't raise pre flop, so he's disguised his hand here. That's 300. Dave's definitely thinking he's in front with an 8 here, and, and quite rightly so, because he's disguised this very well. There's no flush draw, so Muritson, does he raise here, do you this, think, Mark? No, no, suck him in. This is, this is an easy process here. What's happened is he's pretty certain that Dave hasn't got an ace because Dave would have raised 1300. him. Wow, All look in. at this. No oh, raise pre-flop. Muritson has trapped yeah. Devilfish. He slow played his ace. Oh. He's put the raise in on the Deep flop. In. And Devilfish, he thought his eight was good. So he's moved okay. in. Muritson's called... It's a massive pot here. <laughs> eight, seven the hands. Devilfish is going to need an eight or a ten, or we're going to lose the first ever late night poker champion back in 1999. Lovely. Is it the ten? Wow. wow. This is fantastic. Devilfish, is he going to survive? He's going to lose here to a two and an ace and a seven. No, he survives. He doubles up. Don't your boys dare say I'm lucky. <laughs> He hit the 10 for two pair. I usually jump out my seat. I had a feeling it was coming that time. I don't know why. We're going to count the chips. They're going to double it up. And we're going to find that Devilfish is right back in contention. 5,100. Let's delve once again into the late night poker archive. In the sixth series of late night poker, Devilfish, Ross Boatman and Tony Bloom got involved in the kind of hand you see in a western saloon when one person's fiddled with the deck and everyone else has a gun. Ross giving the countdown. Could be the all-in maneuver, and it is. Ross has stuck all his chips in the center, and it's the Devilfish with the undercall. Barney, he must have a monster. Devilfish all in. Ross Boatman all in as well. Tony Bloom says I raise and get jacked up on both sides. <laughs> and he's called. He's in history, Two you? players are in now. Tony Brown is calling. Okay. No more action. Please show your hands. Ross has got ace king off suit. Ace king points. for Ross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 man. Two queens for Devilfish. Pocket aces for Tony. <laughs> Tony Blue with the pocket aces. This deck is colder than a polar ice cap. Queen, Early bar for you and me, Dave, I think. Well, yeah. Flop is five, five, five. 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 Three that fives full of <laughs> aces <laughs> on the flop. Ross <laughs> Boatman could split oh, this oh, pot oh, with oh, a fourth five. Oh, Devilfish oh, needing one of two queens five, to stay five, in. Miracle. Five. No oh, miracles oh, today. Oh, two of the top oh, Hold'em oh, players oh, on the oh, planet oh, have oh, just oh, been oh, assassinated oh, by Tony Bloom. 
This is one for the books. Devilfish and Ross Boatman could not compete with Tony Bloom's three fives full of two aces, and that full house emptied this one.